What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. What do you think? I think it could be pretty dangerous depending on how deep you go with it. I think if you stay somewhat surface level and say, yeah, really bad guy, you know, he was a, he was a predator, did all these horrible things, he was probably Intel asset and, you know, the obvious things. Okay, that's par for the course, but if you start getting down to moving around dates and names and figures and money and track following the money like you know good government agents say you're supposed to do yeah then they go oh no 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 not too much why so i feel like we've been investing an awful lot into the irs lately the irs has to have an <laughs> epstein division if they're serious about the truth if they're serious about counting every penny don't look at the guy that's Venmoing their carpenter friend 600 bucks for helping in the bathroom with a project they were doing <laughs> on the weekend. Look into the Epstein team. Yeah, they're not. Let's start a petition, dude. Wait, yeah, let's start a it petition. It gets at least three signatures. There's three of us in this room. Right. I don't know if three signatures will move the, the water on this, but maybe, who knows? Maybe if we will. got three million, they'd probably shut it down. Yeah, and we'd be, la- we'd be uh, you know, shot ourselves in the back of the head twice. Yeah, yeah. That's. I don't plan on doing that anytime soon, I, just in I case anyone's. You. I believe, by the way, what, what, are, what are you doing in New York this time? We got an underground fight club to go to. We got a motorcycle club, our first one percenter cr- club, which those guys are really hard in. Who are they? The Loose Cannons. That's what they call themselves. Okay. Uh, we are going to the most dangerous projects in New York with arguably one of the most dangerous games, the Trinitarios. We're going to visit them. Sounds fun. Have a little block party. Um, bring Tell your them ba- I said hello. Yeah, bring your bandana, okay? Okay. Um, <laughs> and, oh... There's this vigilante group out in Hartford, Connecticut. I don't know if you guys heard about them, but they're patrolling their neighborhood with guns and they're cleaning up the trash. It's like wait, a, they're cleaning up the trash. Like, they're, they're like it's like a couple pastors, the like community leaders, like George Zimmerman type shit. <laughs> George Zimmerman, I'm it's like it seemed like they're good guys. It seemed like they're so sick of the crime, yeah, that they're like, you know what? If the cops can't stop it, we're gonna say something about it because we're tired of like people running and gunning for no reason. What's the legality there? In New Jersey, or in Connecticut, I said New Jersey. In Connecticut, they can conceal carry. They can't open carry. Okay. But if they're lawfully, they can patrol neighborhood. They're not like pointing like, hey, you, you know, <laughs> pick up the Come trash. Come on over here. <laughs> I think they just have it tucked in a safe place, pointing away from their wiener, and then they are cleaning up trash as they go. And if someone looks criminal, they're ready, but they might have to pull it out. You know? mm. Have they had to take action yet? I will be asking them that. I, that mm-hmm. would be a good question to add to the list. Interesting. Yes. And what's the deal with the with the biker gang? How do you, and like? And again, don't reveal your secret sauce here. But how do you even get in contact? He emailed me too. Oh. <laughs> I love getting these emails, dude. My emails and DMs are full of people around the country. Hey, come to Pine Ridge. Hey, come. So like, I'm invited everywhere I go. There's nowhere I go that I don't have a contact in place. And a plan of attack. There's mm-hmm. nowhere I just wander in and see if I can make it work. So that, that also greases the skids because it's like, okay, like I might say, hey, like for this project, okay, I'm going to talk to some Trinitarios. I want to talk to a guy that was in prison that's turned himself around. I want to talk to an old lady that has, or mom that has sons that have been in the street and what she can say about it. I want to talk to some regular civilians. I want to talk to the character of the block, who's the funny guy or the guy that set, like, knows the history. So then they have a, like a few things in their mind, like, okay, I got to talk to Jerry, got to talk to Miss Smith. And then we just roll, run, run and gun and go. And these are all different stories, though, so there'll be different videos. Yes. So you so you make, you make also make the most of your time, like if you go to an area. Obviously. What I'm discovering after talking to a lot of YouTubers is we are at the top of the line for efficiency. So we'll go to a place for five days and hit five videos and mm. three podcasts. We're like... I love my family. I love being home. So one of the reasons we make it efficient is so I don't have to be out of sight of Milwaukee that often. Congrats on your new baby, by the way. Thank you, baby boy, Ben. Uh, love that guy. Was holding him this morning. It was just, it made me tear up. Like, it's just so fun when he's smiling. and That's so cool, man. He's, like, starting to laugh. Like, he's trying to laugh, but, like, no noise is coming out. So he's just, like, silently, like, doing that. And um, You're going to have him in a bulletproof vest when he's five years old going into the hood. You know, I wonder, <laughs> like, that is something that I have to consider is how much do I expose him to this stuff? Like, yeah. the other thing I do, I do a lot of real estate in the trenches, too. And so it's like... You do how, a lot of what? Real estate. Oh, like like as a business? Yes. Interesting. Okay. YouTube's not going to last forever, and I don't want to get a day job ever again. So I'm hedging my bets in a few different places that... You know, if the powers that be kick me off YouTube, maybe people won't find me interesting anymore in a year. Who knows, like, what the trajectory is. I think if we keep our foot on the gas and keep getting better, that 
we have a long time on this platform, but I don't want to get overconfident. Very so, smart. Um, so I do real estate, but it's like when I'm pulling up on 11th and Keefe, do I bring my one-year-old with me? Do I wait till he's two? <laughs> At what age is it okay? And then do I need to bring a gun? I don't ever usually have a gun. So it's like, I don't know. It's But part of me is like, he should see it. He should. Mm. And it's not that, like, yes, these are scary places. Oh, man, if a gangster really wants to, like, try something with me while I have my baby, uh, if Satan exists, actually, actually, I hope Satan does exist for a guy like that. I hope that a really horrible afterlife exists for a guy like that. If someone does try and rob me at gunpoint with a baby. So maybe a baby is a get-out-of-jail-free card. Yeah. They're like, oh, I would have robbed your ass, but you had the baby, so I passed on you. You know. Well, you see a lot of these journalists in war zones, like literally in the middle of lines, and once in a while we'll hear someone got hit with shrapnel and died, but usually like their guys can literally be shooting at each other, but they're like, oh, journalists, hi. Like even the, the most enemies, it seems like there's a similar kind of line, at least from what the viewer can see mm -hmm. on on your videos, there's a similar kind of line that you are treated with. Do you feel that when you're talking with these guys? Like I'm almost like... Untouchable. I don't want to say that. I don't want to jinx it. Right. But, you know, people want to take care of us. If they're inviting us to their hood, their trailer park, their you name it, it would be a bad look on them if I got That's smoked right. on their block. So if they really run shit, and I try and make sure I do go with the guys that run some sort of shit, you know, I should be okay. But, like, then you get into these situations you were talking about off camera, the St. Louis video, mm. where you might be surrounded with by 20 guys with guns, including 10-year-olds with submachine guns, and the, the car they, they, that they don't recognize will drive by and people will up their, their gun on them. <laughs> and it's just like an old lady coming home from work and, be, like, that's how some of these places, they beef a block away. Yeah, broad daylight. Could you imagine how stressful that would be if your enemies lived one block away? No. That'd be ridiculous. That'd be horrible. Yeah. It's it's a whole but that's the thing. You you can you can drive across tax lines. I say it like that, right? So I like how a you place say it like a that. place where you have property tax on, you know, a one acre half acre property, sixteen thousand and then Less than a mile away, you got a place with property tax on the same place is five hundred dollars. Yes. Right. Yes. And it can totally sep it, it can create separate worlds. I mean, there was even I think there was like a documentary maybe made called like Park Avenue or something. We can look it up about in New York. You go up Park Avenue, it's like this bougie, beautiful spot. All these big buildings. They don't let people like me in yeah. places like that. Yeah. You keep going. Not anymore. <laughs> Once you get far enough north. It's crazy. But that's the thing. It's interesting you say tax lines because what do taxes fund for the kids? The schools. That's right. And so you have one place, Milwaukee, like Whitefish Bay. It's not Blackfish Bay. It's Whitefish Bay, mm. Shorewood. Those places have very great school systems and school zones. And then you have places that are literally a five-minute drive, 10-minute drive that are like, what the hell is going on in here? Like you have to walk through a metal detector to get into the high school and the kids are wearing like you know, shiesty masks or they're wearing right. their, the COVID mask, but it's really just to, you know, keep undercover. And who knows how many of these kids do have guns on them. And it's like, how is a kid supposed to learn in a place like this? Yeah. They're, they're set up, they're set up to fail. I mean, it's, I think about that often. I'm almost like, is some of this by design? I think it was a lot in the past. Like redlining was a really real thing. Can you explain that to people? Redlining is, well, I think it was specifically black folks, but I don't know if it applied to other races too, but basically like you couldn't move out of certain areas. Like you couldn't mm -hmm. move into the white areas or the nice areas. And I think that was a practice that happened into the late 80s. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.